Hi, Michael. So I saw your video on uh, grating of cheese. Uh, before I dive deep into the details of that, uh, my first question is, what's the intention of that video? The funny thing is that I'm not sure. I was more sure at the beginning, I wanted to show a demonstration of two processes that were happening uh, in a comparable way. And my little metaphor for it was that uh, I would use a fancy bit of gear, fancy bit of hardware, um, a food processor to grate some cheese. And then I would use a little hand cheese grater to grate some cheese. The so-called manual process uh, makes it look a lot longer. But there's an accounting problem here. And the accounting problem is that the moment of the activity is not all there is to it. There's setup and there is a, a cleanup, tidy up. And so I wanted to draw parallels to that. And I could say things about um, uh, processes. And then on top of that to say, but cooking isn't a manual process or an automated process, it's a social process. There's way more to it than just the mechanics of it. And I thought I had something right up until the very end of the process. And then I looked at it and I've been working at it for a long time and it just, it didn't <laughs> hit the spot. So this is a lesson about being in the builder's mindset versus the tester's mindset. Once you move into the builder's mindset, it's really hard to see the problems in the stuff that you're doing in the moment that you're doing it. Then I sent it to you. I sent you the video and uh, uh, I got some feedback from you. With your video, Michael, when I started uh, going through it for the first time, uh, one thing was clear. I missed your smile. I, I saw that you were uh, not your usual self. Maybe you were too much focused on the process. Uh, there was too much of action and commentary going on side by side, which I felt that it was very difficult for the first timer to grasp. Uh, I did get the point in terms of what you were trying to convey, but then that was too late, somewhere around the fourth minute or fifth minute. So you had lost uh, the initial, the first impression in the first few seconds, you had lost the audience. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. You pointed out that I wasn't smiling. When I was looking at the camera, when I was looking head on at the camera, um, I didn't have somebody who was reacting to what I was saying. As a social being and as social beings, we, are altered by technology in very interesting ways. And I'm worried about that in the COVID environment because we're not seeing each other in the same ways that we've seen each other all along. Uh, we are not seeing our entire body language. There's not a bunch of people in the room. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when there's a bunch of people in the room and somebody says something, everybody freezes up or everybody laughs or everybody smiles or everybody relaxes. That's a lot harder to see when we're on camera. And it's especially harder to see when things are staged. Mm. In fact, okay. that's a testing lesson too. When you stage something, when you set it up in an artificial kind of way, it's very different from what happens in the natural process. And then when you edit it, that's different still. What looks like an eight minute video is actually a lot of hard work, which went in. Uh, would people uh, underestimate that seeing that, oh, it's just an eight minutes video. Uh, is that also something to be considered? I'm absolutely convinced of that, yes. I'm absolutely convinced of that because what you're seeing is a ship in a bottle. Whenever you see something finished, you don't see the work that went into it. 
if you're looking at a ship in a bottle, you don't see the tangled strings and the, the snapped hinges on the mast and you don't see the spilled glue and the spilled paint. You don't see the mess. And there's a problem with that when we're talking about testing because not only do we not see the mess, we're kind of ashamed of it. And if we're ashamed of it, we'll try to suppress it. And if we suppress it, then people won't realize that it's happening. That's a real problem with deep testing. Deep testing takes time and it takes effort and it takes uh, failed attempts and it takes a lot of running at it to try to get it right, to try to make it look like a, a polished test report or to, to, to land that big fat bug, that can take a lot of time. And that time is often something that we are pressured not to take. But in not reporting that it's taking that much time, we misdirect and misrepresent what testing is, is actually like. So imagine uh, we ask you saying, oh, Michael, fantastic. You did a great eight minutes video in a day. Can you get uh, uh, in the next 48 hours, can you get 10 such videos? Because we then <laughs> divided the 48 hours by eight and then said, oh, it should be easy uh, to do 10 videos which actually happens in testing by many managers. So there's this other dimension to it, which is really funny, of course, which is I thought from you that I was under some pretty severe time pressure. And it turns out if I had only asked you, I would have had more time. Right. And uh, what do you do when you're under pressure? A lot of the time what you do is you just try to get it done and then you present the a client with something that doesn't land. So as, as you're my client, um, one of the things that I could have done uh, because I was doing this in the middle of the night, which matches really well to Indian time, I could have contacted you kind of like going to the uh, uh, boss and saying, uh, I, I ran out of time. Now I got feedback from you and I got feedback from James that made me believe actually I could probably rescue this. Mm. But I thought that telling this story might be a little bit more instructive. 